this is Vicki Gervicus at the Greater Gainesville Chamber, and I'm the Director of Public Policy and Grassroots Engagement, and I'm delighted to welcome Diane McGraw today. She is a candidate for the school board and District 2. So she's going to tell us a little bit more about her and uh, answer some questions for us today. Welcome, Diane. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Vicki, and good morning to all who are listening uh, I am Diane McGraw, your candidate for the Alachua County School Board, District 2. And I am so excited to have this opportunity. Anytime I can talk to an audience about what I have been doing for years in our community, my heart is overjoyed and pleased. I have been volunteering in Alachua County Public Schools since 1992 after I arrived here that year, graduating from Florida a &M, uh, University. And since then, I have been volunteering, serving on many boards locally. But one of the things that stood out to me, especially during my uh, my children's high school years, I noticed a lot of the kids in mainstream were being kind of left out. If you were in the advanced programs, it kind of was like two worlds. And that was a huge concern after I had to help a young man graduate in eight weeks. And I began to say, with all of my experience, my master's is in education from Nova Southeastern University as a former probation officer working at Meridian Behavioral Health Care. So I understand uh, mental health and people with disabilities. Uh, and so all of that experience, I said, needs to be at the table, meaning as a school board member. And so also I run group homes for the developmental disabled. So I work with intensive behavior folks who sex offenders, murderers, who are very physically and verbally aggression. I've been doing that since 2000. And so I have all of the experience that's needed with what we're dealing with with the challenges that our children, especially when it comes to social work and mental health, that is a huge concern. And when they cannot read, that is a direct correlation to behavior. So now we have to be able to work with the whole family. So uh, I started this work seven months ago when I was elected in 2020. I was able to serve for seven and a half months. And so I want to continue the work that I started and especially the relationship I have with the chamber as far as we have in common about growing our own talent. And it starts with education and we must do a better job of providing options for all children. You have magnet uh, uh, schools and programs for kids who do well academically, but there's some kids who are very good at whether it's plumbing, electrician, or cosmetology. We need to have more of those programs so kids can feel successful. And when kids feel good about what they're doing, you will get a much better outcome and, uh, and input from them. And we want to see them become, and it ensures them that they become good assets to our society. So that's kind of in a nutshell, a little bit about me and why I'm running. Very good. Okay, let's jump into our questions then. Um, what do you think are the three most important concerns facing the school district right now? The biggest concern is the achievement gap. We have had the widest achievement gap for over seven years now. 2014, 15, as I said in one of my articles that was in the Gainesville Sun, the last time our third graders did above the state average was 2014, 15 school year. And we have continued to do the same thing over and over again. And one of our problems is we have to look at putting people in place that have the knowledge base and one of the, to, to move the achievement gap. And one of the biggest things I see, our teachers, they want to do well, but we have to support them. We got to teach teachers uh, how to differentiate in the classrooms, how to look at data so that you can maneuver. If we see that a child is struggling, uh, we, we got to change, you know, gear in mid-year. How do we adjust to make sure we're, we're putting kids on computers, Vicki? But one of the problems is if they cannot read, they're not understanding what they're doing on the computer. And so we got to get back to the basics of offering more professional development and training. And we all have to be culturally responsive and understand our kids are diverse. You have black, white, Caucasian, you know, I mean, uh, Hispanic children. Everybody learns differently, but how do you pull it all together? Our teachers are struggling with classroom management. And then we have uh, behavior. And the other issue is we have a lot of behavior issues. Now you got to work with the whole family. We must identify. And I think with my background being a behavior management training, because all of my facilities are intensive behavior, we have to now put a team together. If the problem is on the bus, transportation is the other huge issue. 
issue. So with the behavior, if you can read, that's a direct correlation. That's the issue. So the achievement gap. Tra uh, behavior, we have to put social work and mental health together on a regular basis. They, they have to be in our schools every day. And so and you have to now maybe offer parenting classes to parents to help them. Uh, and you got to have hire more teachers that can relate. We need more African-American and minority teachers, period, in some of our more uh, challenging schools. That's the bottom line. It needs to be diverse enough so somebody, so our children have somebody they can look to in that school to go to before things get out of hand, which leads to what I used to do as a probation officer. They end up in the, you know, incarcerated. We have to avoid that if we start early, and we have to start early. Another thing is a huge transportation problem. We got to get the kids to school. We have a shortage a bus drive. So we got to start thinking outside the box, how we're hiring people. I thought about it, you know, when I transportation, you know, we, they only work maybe four or five hours and then that's it. They get a break and they come back, but maybe in between time, we can use them as paras in the classroom. That would help as well. So um, the achievement gap, behavior and transportation are the main concerns that I would definitely be looking at uh, if I'm afforded the opportunity to return to uh, the work I had started. Very good. Um, that, that's a perfect segue into, uh, into the next question, which is, what do you think the role of the school board is in the community? Well, in the community now, for one, the role of the school board, we must look at policies and procedures. That's going to help us move forward. That, that's our job and hire the right superintendent has to be the right fit to run the day-to-day -day operations. But as a board member, we don't always have to do everything in the, in the board room. Sometimes the board member, people need to see us. We need to get out involved. It may need to be a community day that you just come by and share your concerns with, with us. You know, we may open up a day to come and share your concerns. It may be my day to go to Gainesville High School. It may be somebody else's day to go to Lake Forest. People, we have to engage. Uh, and, and one of the things we, and we see this because the famous backpack issue that just happened. <laughs> Nothing was vetted to the community. And when you don't help uh, your community understand processes and how things work, that's how chaos and miscommunication happens. And that's our role. We, as the school board, we are responsible. If there's a policy that needs to affect the change that's needed for the superintendent to make sure that day-to-day -day operations is going right, that's our job to do that. But we're also responsible for the achievement gap. And we are responsible for making sure kids can learn. We have a slogan, a motto that says we're committed to the success of every child. And that's our role. Just like we partnered with you all. I was at the table uh, before a school board member with the Latra County Education Compact. It's all of us working together, but also understand processes. And so that is our role, especially when it comes to your funding. If it's your funding, it may be a day that we come and we open up and we just share. Here's how the budget works. Here's how we like we get funded for four hours a day per pupil. So after that, you got your title one money right now. You got some ESSA money, which is temporary, which runs out in 2023. But but you got to look and show people. So now when we come and say, hey, I need the one meal I need to have since sales tax, people are more apt because they understand the process. They understand what you're up against and they'll support you better. And so if we do those things a lot better. I think uh, we will be in a better place as a board. Very good. OK, um, and this gives you an opportunity to um, drill down a little bit on some of what you've already said. What would be your top priorities and projects if you're uh, returned to office? Uh, the achievement gap and the CTE. As you know, career and technical education is huge for me. Uh, really, the hand in hand, that achievement gap, direct correlation to me is with behavior. I just, you know, all of this because, you know, as board members, we take on different um organizations. And one of mine was working with going to court on Wednesdays for our challenging students. But the career and technical education, as you know, I had a workshop when I was a board member to see what we offered. That was one of the first things I did when I arrived. Um, because we started eighth grade introducing kids to career and technical education as far as if they're not going on to college. Not good. That's too late. 
You know, when they're arriving, maybe fourth grade, you know, elementary is, is um, up to fifth grade. Okay, in fifth grade, let's start talking about, here's some things. We could partner with the, the chamber and different companies because you have a list of different companies and we all need workers. We all need to keep these businesses going, but we want well-trained, qualified individuals to do that. And so as a board member, uh, I, that in that workshop that I had, I had 27. You all were part of that. I had 27 people show up. We had it at the Cultural uh, Culinary Arts uh, um, building over at Eastside. Wonderful. Everybody was on board. Career Source was on board. Had a commitment of people wanting to raise $5 million so that we can match funds. I had Hernando County and Polk County come up because Every, so when, when kids get to ninth grade, our succession plan and interest plan should be moving at the same time. So when they graduate, they know where they're going. So my priorities is is got to be that achievement gap, the career and education and dealing with our behavior so that our teachers can feel uh, that they can teach. We want them coming to school teaching. We wasting too much time on dealing with kids. And if the kids are having some challenges, let's put a support system in place to help them. And it may be that we have to look at them uh, at Aquin. We're going to look at those students. We had Horizon. You pull those kids, you work on them with their behaviors, start introducing them, taking them on tours and things of that nature, introducing them. Sometimes just getting a bus, taking them to different sites to see begins to make a difference because they've never seen it before. Because when they're young, they soak up information like a sponge, but we got to provide the right opportunity for all kids to be successful. Very good. Okay, um, this again touches a little bit on, on uh, what you've already said. Um, there has been significant turmoil uh, mm -hmm. in the district and within mm -hmm. the uh, board itself. How is this best addressed? Well, and I think it's best addressed to me, we're moving in the right direction. I, I, I do like that we have the opportunity uh, to have a brand new board just about coming up in the fall. And I think that and I know when I ran in 2020, I was up against a 30 year system of things being the same. Uh, most people who know me, I'm not status quo. That's why a lot of people were nervous when I decided to run in 2020. But the thing is, none of the children in our community asked to come here. And as leaders, we have to be examples in the bickering and the arguing back and forth. Let's get out of who likes who, <laughs> you know, who likes who, and, you know, it's about what's best for the children. I may not sip coffee with a person every day, but if that person can help me move the achievement gap, I want to work with them because it's what's best for the children. I think people lost the focus. And I think through all of that I have gone through in the past year, in you know, in a year or so, that people see that I, I have stamina. I'm not going anywhere. I still was volunteering and, and with the UFLA. I got trained in the UFLA program, was tutoring at Lake Forest from October of last year to March because it, with, with our second graders, first and second graders, because my concern, we before we get to third grade, they need to know how to read. But as a board member my job and I've shown to my students that I'm a leader and you haven't seen me in public uh, arguing back and forth with people I've stayed focused even when the political attacks come I've remained focused on that I'm committed and I have the courage to lead. I'm committed to serve and I have the courage to lead and I will encourage my board members you know fellow board members to do that and also to have a retreat so that somebody else comes in and talk about not just a retreat uh, but come in and, and, and talk about different ways and what's been successful in other counties and things of that nature. There's nothing wrong with having other speakers come in. But 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 I think that we're headed in the right right direction with having an opportunity to have a brand new board. But sometimes when people have been complacent, I think overall the district has been complacent where well, we've done it this way for years. However, how we have been doing it has not been working. And you see the results of what happened. The achievement gap has not moved. Discipline is continuing to, to happen um, on a regular basis. Transportation, people are not coming to work. Um, so leadership is going to be extremely important. I think with all the experience that I've continued to have, I'm able to, uh, right now, campaigning with other people in the community. We've been respectful of one another. And that's what it's going to take. Because my focus, I'm running, even though I'm running for school board, my main focus is I'm running for children. And I've shown that. Very good. Okay, so now we have that last wrap up question, which is, why should the members of the business community vote for you? 
And I think I've, I've said that over and over again. I think that with all of the experience as a former probation officer, I've seen both sides of it. Um, and, and with my master's in education, um, with having group homes for developmental disabled, when you're dealing with intensive behavior, that's extremely important. Um, my volunteerism that I've had since 92 in the school system, and I've been attending board meetings since 2017. I know all of the issues. Uh, I have the, the background to deal with the issues. And the kids and the children, I have a good relationship with children. People meet me and say, you helped my child or you helped me. Because I was known how I got my reputation. I was known as a lady who would meet parents at the Starbucks up on 16th. I didn't know them. And I would walk in with them to a, to a uh, IEP meeting. They go, oh, Mr. McGraw, you with them? Yes. I don't care if they're Black, White, or Hispanic. I am here for kids. I know my kids did well. Our, all kids are going to make mistakes and those things, but, but you still got to support them. We can't just throw them away. And, and the increase in the gun violence and thing is going to take somebody who is committed, who is committed to serve, who has the courage to lead. I'm, I'm self-employed, and so I show the entrepreneurship side as well. Uh, I'm always doing something with children, and that leadership is important. This is this is not about politics for me. This is to make sure. I love Elijah County. Elijah County has become more and more dangerous because what we have failed to do on the educational side, but also supporting and holding parents accountable when it comes to different things, when your children do something wrong, but how you deal with that accountability piece and kid and parents will work with you is that you cannot embarrass them in public. Take them aside, work with them. That's why our social work and mental health people are so important because now they can have somebody calling these kids on a regular basis. How is it going? How are you doing? We have a system in care in place. You let Miss Carter and her team come in. If there's a problem with transportation, you, they bring all an ESE department. All those people become your BRT at your school, whatever school that child is attending. All of them become the become the team. And you support those kids and you help them earn their way back into that classroom where they can be successful like their classmates. And so I think with all of that, I am the right candidate and I ask people to, to support me, um, you know, for this upcoming election. <laughs> yeah, all right, very good. Well, now you have another minute or two if there's anything else you wanted to add or if you wanna just wrap it up and bring us home, it's your last couple of minutes. All right, thank you so much again for this opportunity. I wanna remind folks, if you have that ballot now, I need you to check McGraw <laughs> uh, on your ballot, but also, understand that this is serious. You know, we are in a time where our children's hearts are becoming hard because they feel people don't care. And if our children who have the support, who are doing well, we want to continue to encourage them. You know, I would like to see kids come before our school board meetings as well and share their successes not the same children, but allow people to earn their way. I want to see our children have a team where when we do have a, a, a superintendent search, they are part of the team. And that comes from, it would be great if we had a countywide election for your middle school and your high, high schoolers to have a representative from every school. And then they'd be a part of the team when we start doing a superintendent search because we do need to do a search here in Alachua County. So I ask people to remember Diane McGraw, your candidate for Alachua County School Board District 2. Vote early, August 13th through the 20th. If you got your mail-in ballot, you can do it now. But also August 23rd is election day. And I am your candidate who's committed to serve and I have the courage to lead. Thank you. Thanks so much, Diane. And of course, you made my job easy because I want to echo exactly what Diane said is that we are committed at the chamber to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to make their voice heard. So uh, keep checking in with our website. We've got a lot of information about the candidates, the deadlines you need to be aware of, uh, and everything you need to know, basically. So get out, make sure you're ready and vote whenever, whichever way you like, vote for our election on Tuesday. August 23rd. Thanks again yes. so much, Diane. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Take care.